Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn to solve problems related to the stoichiometry of thermochemical equation. First, what is a thermochemical equation? A thermochemical equation is a balanced chemical equation that includes the value of delta H in the equation. For example, 1A plus 2B gives 3C and enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 100 kilojoules per mole of A. This is an example of a thermochemical equation. In any thermochemical equation, the magnitude of the enthalpy change is proportional to the amount of substance that is being reacted. And we can use the value of enthalpy change in stoichiometric calculations in the same way we use the mole ratio of a balanced equation. Let me explain what I mean. According to the stoichiometric equation, we can say that for every mole of A that is consumed, we get 3 moles of C. We can use this mole ratio to calculate the number of moles of C formed for a given amount of A consumed. For example, we can say that if we start with 0.5 moles of A, we would get 1.5 moles of C. We can do similar kind of calculations with the enthalpy change as well. For example, according to the balanced equation, for every mole of A consumed, 100 kilojoules of heat is released. So, if 10 moles of A is consumed, how much heat will be released? The answer is 10 times as much heat, that is 1000 kilojoules. Let us now do a couple of example problems. Example 1. Methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. The following is a balanced thermochemical equation for this reaction. CH4 gas plus 2 O2 gas gives 1 CO2 gas plus 2 H2O liquid. Enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 885 kilojoules per mole of methane consumed. The question is how many grams of methane has to be burned to produce 550 kilojoules of heat? Now. Pause the video here and try to answer this question. Now, according to the balanced thermochemical equation, the amount of heat released when one mole of methane is completely consumed is 885 kilojoules. We need to calculate the amount of methane required to produce only 550 kilojoules of heat. So, we first convert the kilojoules of heat into moles of methane and then we convert moles of methane into grams of methane using the molar mass of methane. We start with 550 kilojoules and multiply this with a conversion factor that has kilojoules of heat in the denominator and moles of methane in the numerator. We know that according to the balanced thermochemical equation, this is 1 mole of methane per 885 kilojoules of heat released. Kilojoules, kilojoules get cancelled. Next, we need to convert moles into grams. So we need to multiply this with a conversion factor that has moles of methane in the denominator and grams of methane in the numerator. The molar mass of methane is 16. So for 16 grams of methane, we have 1 mole of methane moles moles get cancelled and we have only grams that are left over. If we do the math 
we get 9.94 grams of methane. This is the amount of methane that we need to burn in order to produce 550 kilojoules of heat. Example 2. Hydroquinone reacts with hydrogen peroxide to form quinone and water according to the following equation. 1 mole hydroquinone react with 1 mole of hydrogen peroxide to form 1 mole of quinone and 2 moles of water. Enthalpy change for this reaction is minus 203.7 kilojoules per 1 mole of hydroquinone consumed. If we mix 100 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydroquinone with 100 milliliters of 0.2 molar hydrogen peroxide at 25 degrees Celsius, what will be the final temperature of the solution after the reaction is complete? You can pause the video here and try to answer this question. So in this question, we are mixing the aqueous solutions of hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide. These two reactants react with each other and form products. The reactants and products of the reaction are the system and the water in which the reaction occurs is the immediate surroundings. When the reactants react with each other, they release heat and the heat released by the system is absorbed by the water and its temperature increases. What we need to do is calculate the final temperature of water. First, let us calculate the number of moles of hydroquinone consumed in this reaction. To do that, first we need to find out the limiting reactant in this equation. So, let us first calculate the number of moles of hydroquinone in the reaction mixture before the reaction begins. We know the volume of hydroquinone solution and the molarity of hydroquinone solution. We can multiply these two to calculate the number of moles of hydroquinone. We have 100 milliliters. We convert milliliters into liters and we multiply that with molarity. If we do the math, we get the number of moles of hydroquinone added in the reaction mixture is 0.01 moles. Let us now calculate the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide added before the reaction begins. Again, we know the volume of hydrogen peroxide and molarity of hydrogen peroxide. We start with 100 milliliters, convert that milliliters into liters and multiply it with molarity to get the number of moles. So the number of moles of hydrogen peroxide is 0.02 moles. Hydroquinone and hydrogen peroxide react in 1 to 1 ratio and we have 0.01 moles of hydroquinone and 0.02 moles of hydrogen peroxide before the reaction begins. Therefore, we can say that hydroquinone is the limiting reactant and it will be completely consumed in the reaction. That is, the number of moles of hydroquinone consumed is 0.01 moles. Now, according to the balanced equation, for every mole of hydroquinone consumed, it releases 203.7 kilojoules of heat. And in this reaction, 0.01 moles of hydroquinone is consumed. So the amount of heat released is, we start with 0.01 moles of hydroquinone and multiply it with a conversion factor that has moles of hydroquinone in the denominator and kilojoules of heat released in the numerator. That is 203.7 kilojoules 
per 1 mole of hydroquinone. Moles of hydroquinone gets cancelled and if we do the math, we get 2.037 kilojoules of heat released. Now all this heat that is released by the reactants and products is absorbed by the water which is the immediate surroundings and the temperature of the water therefore goes higher and we need to find out the final temperature of water. We know that the heat absorbed by the water and the temperature change are related to each other by the following formula Q is equals to mc delta T. We have heat absorbed by the water which is 2.037 kilojoules and we can calculate the mass of the solution or water from its volume. As you can see when the two solutions are mixed the total volume of the solution is 100 milliliters plus 100 milliliters that is 200 milliliters and since it is a very dilute solution we can assume the density of the solution is the same as the density of pure water that is 1 gram per milliliter therefore mass of this 200 milliliter solution is 200 milliliters times a conversion factor that has milliliters in the denominator and grams in the numerator that is 1 gram per milliliter. Milliliter milliliter gets cancelled and 200 grams of water or solution. So this is the mass of solution. Next the specific heat. Since this is a dilute solution we can assume that the specific heat of this solution is same as the specific heat of pure water and delta T is T final minus T initial and we need to find out delta T. If we rearrange above equation to isolate delta T we get delta T is equals to Q over MC. Let us now plug in all the values and solve for delta T. If we do the math, we get delta T is equals to 2.44 degree Celsius. Next, we need to calculate the T final, which is equal to T initial plus delta T. That is 25 degree Celsius plus 2.44, which gives me 27.44 degree Celsius. This will be the final temperature of water or the solution.